life than Neville too while he's getting himself sorted. Um, Neville does these beautiful calendars. Um, if you want to purchase those, there's $35, so they're on the, on the um, table here and you can see Neville. They've got beautiful pictures on it that Neville has taken. So from the area of different places, it says on the back where they are from and Oh, they're very beautiful. Second, there we go. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. There we go. Well, wonderful to see so many here today, and um, Jenny certainly preempted my message. We haven't uh, no. chatted about what I was going to speak on. Um, when, when they asked me to speak this morning and I didn't send it through ahead of time and um, to hear her speak this morning about what she'd uh, experienced at the recent ACL event um, it sounded like she'd already read half of what I read <laughs> um, yeah it is a, a very important time with, with the election coming up and uh, when she asked me to, uh, to share with you this morning I was wondering what to share because I write articles regularly and have them published and uh, there's so many things on my heart that I want to share with people to encourage them in their walk and their relationship with God and uh, I, I had an idea of what I wanted to speak on and then the very next morning I saw a video of uh, Tucker Carlson, he's an American guy and he was interviewing someone and talking about in Canada how that now adults, if they're depressed because they don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, can euthanize themselves. And they're working on laws for children without parental consent to go to a doctor and get euthanized. That's the state of the world we're living in. And it's not that different here or in many other countries. And that's the information I needed to go, this is what I wanted to share on. That was what was on my heart. And then to hear Jenny share this morning. Can I just ask, can everybody hear all right? Or would you like it up a bit louder? Yes. A bit all right? Yeah. Back. Yeah. Bit up? Yep, yep. Yep, bit up. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Yep, yep, cool. Yeah. So Lord, this morning may everyone here um, hear your words in your heart as, as much as they might be coming out of my mouth. May they feel encouraged, may they feel inspired, and may they live even more for you in the week ahead as their relationship with you grows closer. Well, I wanted to start this morning by, as you can see, I've uh, defaced someone else's book cover there. <laughs> Letter to the American Church by Eric McTaxis. It's a new book that's just come out. And um, so the title of my message is Letter to the Australian Church, because after reading the book, I'm like, there is so much in here for Australians. So I wanted to start this morning by asking you, what are some of the differences that you know of between Australia and America? Anyone want to throw a difference out between Australia and America? Proposition. There we go, Proposition 1. I'm not sure what it is, but I do know they have propositions over there. It's a very serious one that the election is based on. Normally there's a limit to the age of a fetus as to when it can be aborted. Yes. Proposition 1 is making no limit uh, to yeah. before the baby is born. Abortion is a, a big, big election issue. issue. Big, big one. And I do know over there in one of the states they just aborted. Uh, they just aborted. Uh, they aborted the bill basically, there was something going through Parliament yeah. and uh, over there and there was more no's than yeses and we're talking about people's lives here. So, um, what about similarities? What are some of the similarities that we have between our two countries? We're English speaking. We're English speaking, yes. Uh, you normally tell people if they ask if I've travelled overseas and they're like, why oh, do you speak English? And I'm like, no, we speak Australian. American 
Britain speak American and the English speak English. Because <laughs> we've definitely changed the language slightly over the, uh, the years. So, If we allow our ideological enemies to tell us that we can and cannot say, and what views we can and cannot have, we have taken our eyes off God. That was one of the, uh, the first quotes in the book by Eric, and uh, it's one that really resonated with me, because there is so much ideology in our world today, and so much of it is not out of the Bible. Sadly, some of the churches are preaching ideology that is not out of the Bible. I've watched Eric's interviews for years, and his humour and honesty and diverse guests have always held my interest. Though he's written multiple best-selling books, it wasn't until recently, researching an article that's hopefully going to be published this week on christiantoday.com.au titled Eric vs. Eagle that I finally read one. Uh, his latest book, Letters to the American Church, is as timely as it is long overdue. I hope he doesn't mind me. As I said earlier, defacing the cover of his book for my time with you here today. The City on a Hill reference in the introduction of the book held extra significance when I read that, with the recent resignation here in Australia of the Essendon Football Club's CEO just 24 hours after his appointment, due to his association with the church by the same name. Why was his association an issue? Due to the church's uncompromising Bible-based belief held by Christians for generations. According to Eric, critical race theory, radical transgender and pro-abortion ideologies are inescapably anti-God and anti-human. And that's just in the introduction. Despite having been a writer for the Veggie Tales, Eric's books on the Christian martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer was what really brought him to the attention of many. Selling a million copies of the book is an achievement. Selling over 1 million copies of a 640-page book in 19 languages, even rarer. Who knows who William Wilberforce was? Who was he? He was one of the founding members of the crew faith, I would imagine. Anyone else want to? He Slavery. That's what I was going for. That's, that answers my second question too. What was he famous for? So my question is, how many more years or decades would slavery have continued if William Wilberforce had done what he was told by society to do and kept his faith private? He was not supported by the church as a whole, as a corporate body, when he was fighting against slavery. He was told to keep his opinions and his faith private, staying silent about his belief that slavery was wrong but he followed through with what he believed God was telling him to do. And he fought, and we have a very different world we live in now. I learned with interest while reading a letter to the American church that it was in 1954 that the then Senator Lyndon Johnson introduced an amendment to the US tax code prohibiting churches and any other non-profit organization from taking a public stand on political candidates. If anyone from a pulpit dared to endorse a candidate, the church's tax exemption would be repealed. It's given me even more respect for pastors like Jack Hibbs in America, who during the last USA presidential election openly talked about what candidates and parties have historically stood for and what they claim to support and telling the audience to make an informed choice. He never went so far as to say who to vote for, but he was very clear about what they stood for. Turning Point Australia, bringing it back home here to Australia before our election. They've recently produced a couple of infographics about some of the political parties, and you can see these online if you want to check them out during the week. Now, I am not going to tell you who to vote for, regardless of what our laws say, but I am going to beg you to please thoroughly research who you're voting for, what do they stand for. 
according to these guys, have gone through some of the concerns that we can have from the ethical concerns, environmental, energy, and they've categorised where each party stands for. Now, obviously, if they've done that research, you have to trust them. You are obviously always welcome to do your own research. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, there's certainly some parties there with a few more green marks than some of the others in red. A little bit more simplified one is another one they've done with parties from left to right. So on the left, you've got the big government patrol attacking religion and their ethics could be questioned. And on the right, you've got the parties fighting for smaller freedom, freedom of speech and traditional values that we get from the Bible. Again, I'm not endorsing any of these because I don't believe that's my role, but I am questioning and urging you to research these parties before you vote for them. Because these are the guys and girls who decide the world we live in. It's also not a matter of just voting once a year. They decide the laws and enact what we're currently living with because we stay silent the other four years until the next election. If we actually have a voice and let them know whether it's federal government, state government, the local council. The local library is going to stay open longer now than what the council had planned to close it because the locals spoke out enough and made enough of a voice and a stand that they changed their mind. We can have an influence in, in our local government. So I really respect those who, like Eric, are bold enough to say to remain silent when some will call us names and criticise us is simply to be cowardly and constitutes a simple failure to trust God. But he doesn't just say it, he lives it at the risk of being cancelled. And there's so much of that happening as Jenny was saying earlier. Like people get kicked off social media or they get taken to court because they voice what is in the Bible. In the past three years, many have cowered while others have been willing to risk income and relationships to stand up for the truth. The lead singer of Skillet, John Cooper, is another who I'm thinking of writing on soon. He's dared to risk being cancelled, not just singing the truth, but also speaking it out as well. Because there's certainly many in the entertainment industry that might on screen or behind a microphone do something, but in their private life it's completely different. He's one that just lives his life out there and he's more than open about his faith, even though he was too early on in his career. But just be quiet about your faith. Your music's awesome, we don't care that you're Christian, but just keep it to yourself, don't tell everyone. And he's like, no, I'm telling everyone. This is who I am, this is my reason for living. And thankfully, he's had a good career all the same. Children having their childhood dripped away from them, paid for by the taxpayer, is happening as much in America as it is here in Australia. The Australian Christian Lobby that uh, Jenny mentioned earlier produced a very informative video back in February 21 about Daniel Andrews as part of their Truth of It series. It's episode 61 if you want to uh, check it out during the week. And I don't think they have the Melbourne up there up here that she just went to during the week but it'll probably go up there very soon. I think they've already got the Sydney one up there. I think they did a Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne event. I think the Melbourne one is up. Oh, up? post on Facebook okay. to say it's up. Yeah. Right. Oh. Mm. Um, so in the time this one was produced last year, there's certainly been enough laws passed by the government to fill another episode. These are just some of the reasons I believe Eric's latest book, Letter to the American Church, is as applicable to Australia as it is in many countries. The separation of church and state is something we hear a lot in the media talked about. Now, it's about keeping the state out of the church. It was never meant to be about keeping the church out of the state. And that's how it's been twisted and portrayed currently. I urge you to read both the 1934 Barman Declaration and the 2009 Manhattan Declaration. How do the churches in our community match up to these declarations? How does your life match up to these declarations? When we speak out, we inevitably encourage others to speak out with us. Decreasing the price of speaking out. So there is no way to remain neutral in such situations. Either we help evil or we fight evil. Either we speak and thereby help others to speak or we cower in silence and thereby lead others to do the same. It's another quote from Eric. 
Has anyone heard of the term the spiral of silence? It refers to the idea that when people fail to speak, the price of speaking rises. As the price to speak rises, still fewer speak out, which further causes the price to rise, so that fewer yet speak out, until a whole culture or nation is silenced. This is what happened in Germany in the 1930s. And this is what Eric sees happening in America, and I see happening here in Australia. I kept thinking of the verse, Faith without works is dead, while reading Eric's book. We cannot earn our way into God's good graces by what we do, as though our good works could themselves be lifted into heaven. Of course not. Nonetheless, what we do shows what we actually believe. Talking about Adam and Eve covering themselves in the Garden of Eden, he writes, They do not ask God what to do. They do it themselves and do it quickly, before he's able to see them as they are. I never previously recalled thinking about this story in this way, and for that I thank him. I also thank him for this quote. We may see their actions in this as constituting the first religious act in history. Religion, in the pejorative sense, seems to think that we ourselves can do this or that, or cannot do this or that, and thereby earn our way back into God's good graces by our behaviours. In religious actions, we seek to minimise the horrifying reality of our disobedience, and thereby caravillarily attempt to bridge the divide ourselves, as if that was possible. In later chapters, he shares his perspective on evangelism, discipleship, toxic masculinity, and perfect masculinity. Certainly hot topics in today's world. Eric is swimming against the current after decades of the church being influenced by society rather than society by the church. I nearly teared up while reading Eric's recent recollection of being with a prominent American pastor who openly shared how proud he was to have not said anything so controversial that he might in any way be cancelled or lose his opportunity to preach the gospel. It's just one of the examples he gives highlighting the similarities he sees between the German church of the 1930s and the American church today. Because the benefit you and I have is that we have the history of knowledge. We can look back at the human toll of silence as an artist and an author myself, I was never silent about my faith, but I have become more vocal in recent years. As my relationship with God has grown stronger, I've been less afraid of people not buying my work due to how they perceive me. As my identity has increasingly been rooted in Him, thanks to some life-changing revelations I've received listening to HCSKL in the Bible school recorded years ago, my fear exponentially decreased. So please, I urge you, don't be silent a moment longer. Voice God's truth in love every opportunity you get. Volunteer to help political candidates who align their policies with the truth that's in the Bible. They, the smaller candidates normally have a very small budget and very few manpower against the big guys who are well funded. Share resources that help people understand what's currently at stake whether it's the ACL videos, the Turning Point Australia infographics, whatever you can get your hands on. If your friends and family don't know these things, share it with them. And don't be afraid with what happens in this lifetime. We weren't created for our time here on earth. We're created for eternity with our Saviour. So I really thank you for the opportunity to share with you what's on my heart today. My closing question for you, I always leave a, a closing thought or a question when I write my articles because I personally never know if it's going to be my last. Will I get cancelled? Will my time here on earth be up? I don't know, I hope not. I hope I keep living lots of years and write lots of articles. But I always try and leave a thought with people. So my question for you is, will you be a radical, obedient follower of Jesus? Or are things here of this world just too important? Thank you, have an awesome week.
approach of what's going on in this world, Lord Jesus. Lord, let us use this word, uh, week uh, to, to search our important decision, Lord, and give us um, the wisdom, Lord Jesus, to know what is uh, the right way to, to go, Lord. Lord, just thank you for Neville and his sharing, Lord Jesus, and um, the word that he spoke today, Lord. Encourage us, Lord, this week to to be um, awesome followers of, of, of you, Lord Jesus, and to be bold, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.